Four straight wins for the Toronto Maple Leafs and 4-0 and oh without Morgan Riley. Interesting stuff there as they win 4-2 over the St. Louis Blues here on Family Day this afternoon in St. Louis. Now, another really quiet game for the Buds. I was thoroughly impressed with their performance today. I knew by midway through the second period, it felt like they were just going to win this game. No matter what was happening, even after they tied it late in the second period, I felt like the Leafs were going to win today. And that scares the hell out of me as a Leaf fan. Having the positivity, the confidence in a tie game that you're going to win? <laughs> it's, it's nuts! Before we go any further, Leafs Nation, today would have been a perfect day and a great game to watch live on TikTok. The link is down below for that. Once I hit 1,000 followers on there, I'll start sprinkling lives, obviously, when I can and I'm not busy. Um, but the link is down below for the TikTok. I do little videos as well, and when there's trades, and obviously with the trade deadline coming up, that is what will be hitting first, because if I'm out and about doing stuff, or I'm at work or something, I can do a TikTok, but obviously I can't do a video on YouTube right away. So if you follow the TikTok page, you can get it right away. All that stuff, exciting, exciting. Can't wait to do lives for you guys. We're over 700 followers on there. Gotta hit 1,000 before we can do that. The link is down below, or go to TO Sports Talk on TikTok for that. All right? Now... As I mentioned, it felt like today the Leafs were just going to win this game. Because you saw the first period and how tight it was played from both teams. Neither team really wanted to give anything up. They were just kind of feeling out the game. And no real chances either way. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. The first game of a road trip, a one o'clock puck drop on the road. If you're the Leafs, I'm okay with feeling this game out. 6-6 six, six in shots in the first period. Nobody scores. And we go to the second period. And a weird play happens. Leafs dump the puck in. This is like right off the faceoff, right? They get the puck, dump it in, hits the official. And like every St. Louis Blue guy on the ice, including Joel Hofer and Nett, Think it goes off the or thinks it goes off somebody on the bench, and they're all like, hey, it went off a guy on the bench. Like, why is the whistle not blown? It obviously went off the referee, and they all just kind of stopped playing. Hover gets the puck behind the net and softly fires it around the boards to, I can't remember who it was, was along the boards, but then Matthews hounds the guy down, strips him of the puck, and Mitch Marner right there on the scene as well, and it comes to Matthew Nyes, and oh my. I know Colton Pareko was an outstanding piece to their Stanley Cup run, but he, Matthew Nyes made him look stupid. The dangle around him... And then the roof daddy shot. Hoo, 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 hoo. Outstanding goal from Matthew Nyes. 22 seconds into the second period. And the Leafs are up 1-0 just like that. Marner and Matthews grab assists on Matthew Nyes' 10th goal of the season. And just like that, Matt Nyes is starting to find things a little bit. It's point number 23 on the season for him. Obviously, his rookie year. So, But if you go back to the Dallas game, right, where the Leafs were able to hang on to that game, he had an assist in that game. Then in the Ottawa game, where we all know happened there, he had a goal and an assist there. Didn't have a point against St. Louis or Philly. But then he had two assists against Anaheim and then another goal today. So that's interesting. So he has points in, was it four of his last six games? He's had multi-points twice. And he's got a couple goals in six games. You like what you're seeing from Matthew Nyes and the effort is there. He doesn't look exhausted like he did after going into the All-Star break where he actually came out and said that he was exhausted. So, it's great. It's really, really nice to see. And just like that, the Leafs have won nothing 22 seconds into the second. Awesome start. Late in the period, on a power play for the uh, St. Louis Blues, Brendan Saad fires one off of Timothy Lilligren and it goes in. Kind of a crappy goal, but eh, it is what it is. It's a goal. And for that's the one guy in the back end that I'm still like, ah. Oh, he's still shaky for me, Timothy Lilligren, because I think about it. Well, what do you think Timothy Lilligren does? Right? Well, what is he? Is he, a, is he a points guy? No. Is he a physical guy? No. Well, is he a defensive guy? Eh, not really. So what does he do? Like That's kind of where I'm at with Timothy Lilligren. Now, I'm not blaming him for the goal. However, on a penalty kill, you're standing in front of your goaltender, there's no one around you, and then Brandon Sod's right in the slot and he just steps to the side to get out of the way of Samsonov, which, hey, respect that if you're not going to block the shot, I guess. And he just steps to the side and doesn't try and defend and just goes off of him and in. And it's like, ah, okay. I mean, crappy it went off you and in, but what are we doing here? So, again, I'm not going to blame him for the goal specifically. It's just crap, crappy spot, crappy time. But... It's the one guy in the back end that I'm just not quite sure about, okay? Let's move on, though. 
It's a 1 1 game after two periods of play. And again, I didn't really think wor feel worried about this game. Shots for 14 to 7 leaps in the second period. Yeah, it was only 1 1. But you go into the third. And right off the, th the face off in the third period, Matthew Nice gets high sticked and we're right to the power play. And Austin Matthews, I mean, my God. Every, you know, every, all these great power play specialists um, usually have one spot. Right, Kucherov's on the right side, even though he floats a little bit as well. But he's got his spot where he usually gets his one-timers and all that stuff. Stamkos on that side. Ovechkin on that side. And Austin Matthews does the little bit of the Kucherov thing where he floats around and finds different ways to score. And my goodness, Marner wins the puck battle down low and hangs on to it as Austin Matthews is circling up the top of the blue line where someone loses him. I don't know who the hell did, but whatever. And he sees a soft spot right in the slot where there's nobody around. So Matthews makes a beeline for it. Marner sees him, a gorgeous feed. Matthews buries it for goal number 49 on the year. 49? This dude's nuts. He's nuts. It's absolutely incredible that this the, the, the clip this guy is scoring at. He's almost at 50, and it's like not even March yet. It's it's just, it's fun to watch. It really is. For a team and a franchise that is a laughing stock for quite often, and still is, when you get something to enjoy, Leafs Nation, enjoy the hell out of it. Great stuff from Austin Matthews. And just like that, the Leafs regain the lead 2-1. That is, they, they, they start, you know, maybe that's, holy smokes. You hear a lot start on time, right? And the Leafs, I wouldn't say they started on time today, but they also didn't cave in defensively in the first period. And then they score a goal 22 seconds into the second period, and they score a goal 45 seconds into the third, starting on time. Yeah, yeah, one, one was a power play, but you forced the play. Then they get a power play just under midway through the period, and Nylander breaks up a pass and makes a beeline up the ice on the right side, and shout out Pontus Holmberg because he really creates this goal. He puts his head down and makes a beeline right up the middle of the ice. Beats both defenders. It's a 2-1-0 with him and Willie at this point. And Joel Hofer is thinking pass the entire way. So right when Willie lifts his leg up, you see Joel Hofer starting to really cheat towards the pass to Holmberg. Nylander sees that and just fires at short side cheese. Because you look at the really awkward attempt to save from Joel Hofer. Nylander had him the entire time. Big shot from Willie. 29th goal in the year. Shorthanded at 7.29 of the third period. And the Leafs are up 3-1. Awesome. Then a late period goal. Tory Krug scores with just over a minute to go in the game. Kind of seeing eye shot from the point. Beat Samsonov at 18.52. And they pulled the goal with over four minutes to play. Crazy. But I mean, hey, it, it's just a risk you gotta take. Then... Marner, again, off that face-off, Leafs win it, Marner gets the puck, and I would have liked him to chip it down the ice, but either way, he got down in the offensive zone, then they have to come all the way back down and pull the goaltender, Marner gets it again, and chips it out, and it's just over the head of Tory Krug, and Tory Krug didn't really look like he hustled that much, because Bobby McMahon is all over him, hounding him for the puck. Now people can say there was holding and this and that, well, how about you try and play the game of hockey, Tory Krug? And instead of just standing there trying to shield the puck. Because McMahon outworks him for it. Strips him of the puck. And buries it into the empty cage for goal number 8 on the year at Bobby McMahon. Stay hot, young fella. Got boosted to the Tavares line today. And he looked great. He had a breakaway. It was the second period he had that breakaway or the first. I can't remember which one it was. But he had a breakaway at one point in this game. He gets the empty netter. Marner and Brody have assists in the goal at 38 seconds in of regulation. And the Leafs win at 4-2. Shots and goal were 9-8 Leafs in the third. 29-21 for the game. And Leaf fans, look at the way the boys just dominated the Blues in back-to-back -back games. Excuse me. Because in Toronto, they only allowed 15 shots. Today they, allowed, today, they allowed 21. And both times, they were leading for almost the entire third period. In the last game, there was the entire third period. Today, they got the lead with 45 seconds into the period. So they had it for most of it. And in each game, they win the shots total in the third period. 9-8 today and 14-3 in the game in Toronto. An outstanding way to finish this game. They played the full 60 and they won the hockey game 4-2 and have now won four consecutive and are now 30-16-8 on the year. They're playing some really good hockey right now. And without Morgan Riley, I will get to the Morgan Riley stuff in a second before I wrap this thing up. But 
Special teams wise, Leafs were one for two in the power play. The Blues were one for two. Leafs out hit the Blues 22 19. Simone Benoit doing his thing. Laying the boom. Ah, it's just so fun to watch this guy. Love him dearly. Now, team stats. Ilya Samsov, unfortunately, that late goal for Tori Krug went in because he was playing a pretty good game. Two goals and 21 shots, but I thought he was really, really good. I think he looked really, really quiet and was really nice in the cage. Austin Matthews, a goal and an assist, a plus two. Nice had a goal and a plus one. McMahon, goal, plus one. And how much did McMahon play today, actually? Only 11.54. But again, he may do with it because he looked like he was out there a lot. Uh, Nylander with a goal. He was good. Marner, again, he's been on fire recently, dishing the puck. Three assists and a plus two. No one's even talking about him. And that's the unfortunate thing with Marner, right? When he has one couple bad games, people get on him like crazy. But he has gone a stretch now of uh, one, two, three, four games. Interesting how the winning streak. Oh, no. Hold on. Because he didn't play the one game against St. Louis. So in the four games he has played, two assists, three assists, two assists, three assists, and he's a plus six in those games. He's been outstanding. So shout out Mitch Marner. And Brody had an assist and a plus three. And from that moment, I got to talk about TJ Brody and the decor. Because I don't talk a lot of trade deadline on this on this page. But I want to bring something up. Watching TJ Brody playing on his left side, it's night and day. Watching him not be handcuffed every time by playing alongside Morgan Riley, it's incredible. He looks so much better, so much more quiet. He's blocking shots out there. And shout out the entire team today. I don't know if someone can figure it out, but how many block shots the Leafs had today? Because it felt like a ton. They wanted this game, and they deserved this win. Brody, playing alongside Lilligren, I mean, you know my thoughts on Lilligren. I, I said it earlier in the video, but having Brody beside him on his left side, it makes everything quieter. And then you have Riley with maybe a, someone to fit with them at the deadline, a right shot, the Christianov. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know how it's going to go. But if you put a right guy, a right D beside Riley, who's a quiet defender, who's on his natural side, who looks comfortable, that'll do wonders for Riley. It'll do wonders for Brody, which will do wonders for Lilligren. And then, yes, everyone loves Benoit McCabe. But you now have them as your third pair. Or you could say the Brody Lilligren is your third pair. The decor looks so much better at that point. That's my thought on things. I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. But also, like I mentioned off the top, or not off the top, recent, like just, just a few minutes ago, the, the block shots today. Shout out to this team. They wanted this one. They really fought the rear end to get this dub. Diving in front of shots. You're watching Tyler Bertuzzi, even though Duke can't even hit an empty net this game. Um... Blocking shots. Brody blocking shots. Benoit, McCabe just blocking shots like crazy. We all know Matthews with the block shots. Marner had a couple today. They looked really, really good. Is there a block shot stats? Actually, there is. Nyes had one. McMahon had two. Nylander, Marner, Brody had one. Uh, Lilligren had two. Holmberg had one. McCabe had five. Reeves had three. Domi had one. Robertson and Tavares had two. Refi and LeJoie had one each, and even Burton Benoit had one each. The team wanted this win today, and they damn well got it. Shout out to these guys. Now, the next game for the Toronto Maple Leafs is on Wednesday. And it's in Austin Matthews' hometown of Arizona, against the Yotes. And we all know the history of the Leafs and Yotes, how things don't really go too well for the Leafs. 10 o'clock puck drop there, by the way. And it looks like it says expected Kirill Vizmelka. And I don't give a damn that he's got a, what is it, a 351 goals against and an 893. I don't care. He's playing the Leafs. A perfect night, a regulation win, and an Austin Matthews 50 in his hometown. I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so you know, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the win take, his boy, that was entertaining. Hit that like button. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. What you like, what you not like from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Twitter, Discord, Instagram, TikTok. All that stuff is down below. So follow up there if you've not done so already. And I'll talk to you guys. Raptors edition Thursday as they host the Brooklyn Nets at 7 o'clock. Getting their second half part of the season on the way. And just, let's get this thing over with. The Blue Jays. Tomorrow. Preseason preview edition, or sorry, spring training preview edition tomorrow at some point in the evening. Because I got work tomorrow, so it'll be in the evening at some point tomorrow. We'll talk spring training, who we're looking, who we're excited to see, all that stuff. And as for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're back in action Wednesday night 
as they are in Arizona taking on the Coyotes. 10 o'clock puck drop there. Looking to make it five consecutive dubs. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, this dub today. Talk to you guys then.